regards to what we have shared last Sunday. Diba? We said that the Lord Jesus Christ has over 100 titles and names recorded in the Bible. He was called the Advocate. The Lord Jesus Christ was called the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Everything begins with Him and everything ends with Him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the author of life. He is the author of salvation. He is the blessed and only ruler. He is the bread of life. He is the bridegroom. He is the captain of our salvation. He is also the chief corner stone. He is our chief shepherd. He is the creator. According to John chapter 1 verse 3, that everything proceeds from him. He is also the door. He is the eternal life. And this coming December with our team, that he is Emmanuel. God is with us. He is also called the faithful and true witness. He is also called the firstborn from the dead. He is called the glory of the Lord. He is God. He is also the high priest, the holy one, the hope of glory. He is the I am. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the lawgiver. He is the last Adam. He is the light of the world. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Lord of glory, the man from heaven, the mediator of the new covenant. He is the Messiah. He is the mighty God. And he is also the bright morning star according to Revelation. He is the offspring of David. And there are so on, brothers and sisters, if we are just really going to scan the whole Bible. There are over 100 names and titles that was addressed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have learned that the most used name of the Lord Jesus Christ is the name, the Son of Man. So the Son of Man, he always used this name whenever he is introducing himself to human. The way he speaks of himself, that I am the Son of Man, because he was speaking to us as a human being. And it also tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ is fully man, 100% man, just like you and me, okay, with flesh and bones, but he is without sin. And since he is human, we understood that we are being assured that the Lord Jesus Christ, being 100% God, fully divine, and 100% man, fully human, is able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. Diba? We understood that the Lord Jesus Christ have suffered more than anything or more than anyone could ever suffer. Sa bawat isa po sa atin. So the Lord suffered for us. He suffered as us. And so he knows what we are going through. And that is a great comfort to each and every one of us to know that God can sympathize with us. Amen po ba? Ibig sabihin, there is no time in our life as a born-again Christian believer that there is no time in our life that we are alone. Even in the most trying times of our life, the most difficult times of our life, God is with us and today our message the title of the lord jesus christ that we are going to share is another very very important name or titles that was addressed to him and that name is the son of god i just i promised last week that we are going to discuss this and so this is very important brothers and sisters because this 
title determines our eternal destiny. Now, we are going to understand this more, what I mean when we say that the Son of God, this title determines each and every individual's eternal destiny. If you want to know where you are going, you have to really understand that name of Jesus, the Son of God. But I want you to hang on to this thought as we go along to our message. Para po, there is something that you want to hold on and those thoughts will continue to be built up. So dito po yung frame ng thought na gusto kong iiwan sa bawat isa sa inyo. Okay, this wonderful truth that the God, the Father, is Spirit and only Spirit. God the Father is Spirit and only Spirit. But God the Son became flesh and dwelt among us so that we could behold, so that we could see the glory of the Father that we can see in the face in the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God will be able to communicate to us because He is a Spirit by what? By the Lord Jesus Christ who is God that became flesh in order for us to really see and understand who God is. And later on we are going to see why He revealed Himself to the Lord Jesus Christ. The second thought that I want to keep in this is that every time the Lord Jesus Christ refers to himself as the Son of God, so whenever we read the New Testament and we read the Lord Jesus Christ quoting his name as the Son of God in relation to his audience, to his listener, we have to understand that what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, yes, I am God, but here it's what I mean that I became flesh with flesh and bones just like you. Ayun po yung ibig sabihin ng ating Panginoong Jesus that I have taken a flesh so that you can understand God and so that you can become like me. Now, the very purpose is that when the Lord Jesus Christ came to reveal the Father so that we as a human being would be able to understand Him, plus so that we, human being, could be like Him. Amen po ba? So it means that Jesus Christ became part of the history. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ, God himself, become part of the human timeline. Can you imagine that? We are all part of the human timeline. Lahat po tayo. And imagine that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to earth and becoming part of this human existence. So God is not just out there that nobody has seen him, that nobody's talked to him. But what God is trying to say here is that he entered into the history when the time that he opened up the heaven, came to earth, born into that manger, into Bethlehem. But the Lord Jesus Christ did not begin in Bethlehem because what? Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. So wala po dapat sa isip natin that He begins on that manger. No, He was the eternal Son of God. He just took a flesh so that He could reveal God to human being. So for our text, brothers and sisters, let us open our Bible in the book of John chapter 11. And please uh, let us all stand as we give reverence to the reading of His Word. If you have your Bible with you, please hand it, give it ready. 
the software that you have because as we go along we're gonna switch in between the verses and the books so our verse this morning is from John chapter 12 and I want to read from verse 20 down to verse 36 this is from the New International Version that I am holding. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this word will keep it for eternal life whoever serves me must follow me and where i am my servant also will be my father will honor the one who serves me now my heart is troubled and what shall i say father save me from this hour no it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it, there is a thunder. Others said, an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this word. Now the prince of this word will be driven out. But I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the Lord that the Christ will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. The man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become sons of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Blessed be the reading of God's infallible word. Let us bow our head and pray. Father, thank you so much that once again you enable us to simply read and enjoy hearing the, the passage, the very text that we have in front of us. A very event that the time that you have spoken from heaven and people have heard your voice. Thank you so much that once again this very hour you have brought us with the very purpose to hear your word into our midst. And it's my prayer, Lord. I admit that I am weak. And it is my prayer that you will strengthen my knees, O God, that I would be able to stand before your people, that your name alone will be glorified, and that let your cross only that shines, O Lord God. Thank you so much for everyone who are here, and it is our prayer that you enable our hearts and our mind to see and hear your message, O oh God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So praise the Lord. So our key word from this passage that we have just read is in verse 
30. Jesus said, the voice. So we are going to take that keyword, the voice. What that voice that reveals that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Who are those voices that identify the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God? So very important po ito for us to really understand sino-sino ba, ano ba yung, sino ba yung nagsabi, nag-claim na ang ating Panginoong Isus is the Son of God. Because for us believers, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a must for us to understand this wonderful truth that we believe in. Right? It is important that this should be clear to all of us who is the follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the question of who is Jesus, that should be clear to all of us. And if you are not a believer yet, if you did not, didn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior or your Lord, that you did not commit your life yet to Him, so I hope and pray that this message would help you to commit your life to that first Son of the Lord Jesus Christ with the help of the Holy Spirit. So ito po yon pag-uusapan natin. And the application, of course, at the, la at the later part will be our response. So there should be a response to us whenever God speaks. So that is what also we are going to tackle this morning. So first, let us study the voice. So the first one, the voice is the voice of the Father. The voice of God the Father. Now, if you will notice, brothers and sisters, especially when we were kids, there are so many arguments that we have. And whenever there is an argument, there is a never-ending answer which always lead into a never-ending arguments. Diba? Marami tayong reasoning. And it will not really conclude any arguments that we have, diba? in our high school time or college time, no, there is a pro and there is a cons, and that really an ending debate. But whenever we say that it is God said, then that is the conclusion of the arguments that always end our statement, di ba? At that most of the time, both party will always agree. Because there is this in our mind that we believe that God is the highest and the authority above all. So kaya po minsan when we are discussing with our brothers and sisters about, for example, euthanasia, death penalty, Okay, any kind of subject that we are discussing, whenever we said, but it is in the Word of God, and it says, and that is always the conclusion of the matter. And here, what we have, brothers and sisters, our argument is that Jesus Christ, is He the Son of God? There is no question in this time whether the Lord Jesus Christ came on earth. Okay, there are so many documentary, there are so many articles that supports that claim that indeed the Lord Jesus Christ is born. But the very question is that, is He really the Son of God? Ayun yung question, di ba? And that is what we are going to have this morning. So here in our first point, that the voice of God, the Father, He Himself, God the Father, identified Jesus as His Son. He spoke from heaven and He says, This is my Son. That one right there is my son. And that time when God is
spoke, it was heard by many people. The first time that God spoke from heaven for a longer period of time, it has been heard by many people. When he says that this is my beloved son. Now this event took place in a different occasion. So number one po is at the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 3 verse 21. It says here, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And he was praying, then the heaven was opened. In other book, in the gospel, the heaven were tore open. It breaks. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. Here it is. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. There is something that we have to really take note in this particular verse that we have just read. Right here, we have the doctrine of the Trinity. In one single verse, in verse 22, the doctrine of Trinity. We can see here God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This verse shows us that there is a person in the Trinity that is called the Father. It shows in this verse that there is a person in the Trinity that is called the Son. And it shows in this passage that there is another person in the Trinity that is called the Holy Spirit. So the Father, the first person, is God. The second person, who is the Son, is also God. And the Holy Spirit, the third person, is also God. But there is only one God in three persons. Now you might ask, Pastor Abel, can you explain it, please? Brothers and sisters, I just explained to you, and I cannot even explain farther than that. It is the best of my ability and my capacity. And just like every human being have to settle into those wonderful truths, because there is really a boundary that God had set for each and every individual. Kahit po pagsamasamahin, lahat ng ating katalinuhan, that will still bounce on that boundary. And as that much as we can understand. I cannot explain it farther, but brothers and sisters, I can declare it and I can believe on the Trinity. There are people who would say that if you will try to explain the Trinity completely, you will lose your mind. But if you will try to deny the Trinity completely, you will lose your soul. And so brothers and sisters, it doesn't mean that we cannot understand it cannot be true. We cannot use our logic in order to formulate this mysterious, magnificent truth about who God is. What the Bible reveals to each and every one of us that is more than enough for us. So here God the Father said, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now there is a three truths. The first one is that the Father 
called Jesus Christ as his son at the baptism. He said that you are my son. And the testimony, I just want to read this to you. The testimony of John the Baptist. Turn your Bible in John chapter 1 from verses 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Diba sinabi natin last two Sundays that, the Lord Je that John the Baptist is, is the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that is preparing the heart of the people of Israel to receive their king of kings which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 32, then John gave this testimony. He says this, I saw the Spirit came down from heaven as a dove and remained on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me. There's a really clear instructions to John the Baptist that whenever this moment arrived and you see, sabi niya dito, the man on whom you see, the spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this, pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Son of God. God revealed to him that when the Holy Spirit descended and remained to that man, he is my Son. But John the Baptist did not know that God would speak from heaven. John the Baptist did not know. The instruction was given to him was very that limited. And so the other people, not only John, hear this, the voice from heaven, but it's also the other people who were with them. So it is God the Father, first incidence in the baptism who identified Jesus Christ as the Son of God. That is his voice. Now the second one is, the second truth that we can see from this passage is that the Father loves Jesus Christ when He said, You are my beloved Son, or you are my Son whom I love. Anong ibig sabihin po nito? Ibig sabihin there is really the, a kind of an infinite love of God the Father towards God the Son in which we cannot really comprehend how, how, how much is that love that God has for His Son. There is an eternal affection, eternal affection of God the Father to God the Son. Ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, there was never a time, there was never a time that God the Father did not love God the Son. Those love were perfect. Those love is from all eternity. Wow. Punong puno yung utak natin, ano? At still, we cannot really fathom how rich and how really big is that. There is no time and there is no space in between in the love of God the Father to His Son. That's much that I can explain. We are all exist in time and space. Time is running and we are occupying space. And there's always in between of any of us. But between God, the Father, and between God, the Son, there is no such thing as that. 
even for the husband and wife, do you have time and space in between? But God is not. Even when the Lord Jesus Christ was on that cross, even to that very moment, when the wrath of God strike the Lord Jesus Christ when he was on the cross, the love of the Father did not diminish towards his love for his Son. But brothers and sisters, it just magnifies instead that his love for the Son is immeasurable. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, the love of the Father for His Son is immeasurable. And that love is upon each and every one of us. I don't know how you will take it, no? But really, that is too much for me. It's really overwhelming that that kind of love was on me as well. Only because of the love of the Father to His Son. And so that is why it says that it is that for God so loved the world. And the truth number three is that God the Father was pleased with everything about our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in whom I am well pleased. Sabi niya dito. Na ano yung ibig sabihin ng well pleased na word in, that, in our Bible? It says that to delight on. To approve on Him. Amen po ba? Now let us just make some diversion, no? In this wonderful truth. And let us focus on ourselves. Okay? Now the, the spotlight now is in, in each and every one of us. Including our children. Okay? I want to ask you this question. As a son and as a daughter. As a son and as a daughter, how difficult it is for you to please your parents. <sighs> how difficult for you as a son and as a daughter to please your parents i think most of us no how 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 much no okay now let me take this i i i do understand okay i would be graceful this time i understand that most of the time we please our parents okay tama ba <laughs> We know it, no? Okay, most of the time we please our parents in the things that we are doing. So they approve on us. Now let me give you a specific example, especially for those who are students. Can I see the hands of every student here? Okay. Wow, dame. Okay. So here it is, a student. Whenever you are submitting, you are giving your great report to your parents. You know, my son, Gab Gab, he called this the moment of truth. <laughs> After all the two months of his study, there is this moment of truth that will reveal lahat ng nangyari. Now, this moment of truth, the moment you give your card, your report card to your parents, you're looking to your parents in his or her face what it looked like, diva. Those were the moments. If she or he is going to approve what you have done so far. Uh, for me, you know, in our family, uh, for me it's just okay lang na makita yung report, ni, yung report card ni Gab Gab. For me it's just okay, no? Kasi mas mataas pa yung grade niya sa akin nung ako yung nag pa noon. <laughs> So, wala akong basihan. But for my wife, nako, grabe. Balik-balik tarin mo na yung card mo. Okay? Kailangan mo nang bulabulain si mama nila bago na ibigay yung card. Kailangan mo nang i-condition yung mind. 
Uh, for me, it's just okay, no? Ganun siguro tayo mga lalaki, no? Okay lang yan, sige lang. <laughs> so those were the moment. And also, there are times that our parents was not pleased with us. Di ba? There are also times that our parents were not pleased with us. If you were just going to recall, kahit na po maidad na tayo ngayon, how many times that your parents was not pleased with you? The way you speak, the way you dress, the, put, the way you, you put on your clothes, the way you walk, the way you act, your behavior, your attitude, di ba? How many times that our parents was being displeased with us, di ba? Especially siguro when we are a student. <laughs> but what we are seeing here, brothers and sisters, is so magnificent. We are seeing the relationship with God the Father to His Son, and the Lord Jesus Christ has always this 100% mark, please, the Father. He always get it. He always pleased the Father in everything. He pleased the Father with the way He do things when Jesus Christ was here. His behavior, His attitude, it was always please the Father. With the way the Lord Jesus Christ interact with the people, when He sent His Son to this world, and His Son is really interacting among the people, God was pleased with Him. He did not sin. Not in His thought, not in His words, not in His action, even not in His behavior, and not in His attitude. Jesus, the Son of God, pleases the Father all the time. So you can see now the big difference. Now the second event where the Lord Jesus Christ being identified by God the Father is at the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 17 verse 5. While he was speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. So this is very important, brothers and sisters, that we can understand this. Because God the Father here is pointing out to his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's saying, this is my son. And also, he approves of what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing when he was healing the sick, when he was offering and giving an eyesight to the blind. Diba? When he was raising a dead, God was pleased with him. But God adds something more that we have to take notice from the first event to the second event. It says here, listen to him. So this is the affirmation. This is the confirmation of God the Father to his son, when he said, listen to him, hear him. Whenever he speaks, listen to him. Because every time he spoke to you, I am the one that is speaking to you. That is how important it is that you have to listen to him. Because the son was speaking for the father. So when the Bible says that Jesus is the Son of God, it means that Jesus is divine. It means that Jesus is God. And the truth behind all of this is very important. That we believe. Because if you don't believe to this truth that I have just mentioned, you will perish. You were condemned already 
as the word of God says. You will perish, you will die, and you will go to hell. That's very straightforward. Now, I want to say this as much as I can with love in my tone, but I can't. So you can just ignore my tone, but don't ignore that wonderful truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you don't believe this, you will perish. John chapter 3, verse 18. It says here, Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. It's very clear. If you don't believe in the Son of God, you are already condemned. Now, the second voice is also important. It is the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So the first voice is the voice of the Father who says, This is my Son. And now the second voice, in a sense, that the Lord Jesus Christ turned to the Father and he says, He is my Father. God is my Father. John chapter 5, verses 16 to 17. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. So when Jesus said that God is my father, he means that I am his son. And that he means if God, if my father is God, then I am God. And the Jews, the Israelites on that very time really understood what the Lord Jesus Christ mean here. Let us continue. John chapter 5 verse 24. If you have your Bible, just go along with me. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believe him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. I tell you the truth, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Verse 36 of John chapter 5. I have testimony weightier, weightier than that of John for the very work that the Father has given me to finish. And which I am doing testifies that the Father has sent me. And I believe, I think this is really the very purpose of the book of John. To, for us to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That he is the Son of God so that we might have life. John chapter 8 verse 54 to 58. John chapter 8, verses 54 to 58. Okay, it says here, Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my days. He saw it and was glad. And the people respond, You are not yet even 50 years old. And you have seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born. Ang sabi niya doon? 
I am. That is really a big statement that the Lord Jesus Christ has made in front of these religious leaders. When he says, before Abraham was born, I am. And really, the Jews knows that. And anong response nila in verse 59? At this, they pick stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself sleeping away from the temple grounds. So they responded with violence. Now in all of this, brothers and sisters, in all the passages that we have read, it is undeniable that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That his claim that God was his Father, that God the Father was his Father, and that he came because of him, and that the Father had sent him, that he always pleased the Father, and that he always do whatever the Father commanded him to do. It only tells us that yet, that yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is really God. John chapter 5 verse 8. I told you we're going to jump, be jumping around the book of John. In verse 18. For this reason the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only that he was breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So the Jew really understand when the Lord Jesus Christ says all these words to them. When Jesus Christ claimed that God is my father, he was telling that God the Father and myself are equal. Diba? Even the Jews, the religious uh, leaders, knows it. Making himself equal with God. Kaya may kita natin dito, he was being accused of blasphemy. But you know, brothers and sisters, it is only an insult to God if the claim of the Lord Jesus Christ is false. But we know that the Lord Jesus' claim was true, it means it is not blasphemy. Right? Because indeed, He is the Son of God. And God the Father really put a point into this argument. In Romans chapter 1, He settles this matter that really question about His Son. Romans chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Regarding his son, who as to his human nature was the descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God. God the Father declared that the Lord Jesus Christ is his son with power. And how God did that, how God the Father will show that indeed Jesus Christ is my son with power by what? It says here, by his resurrection from the dead. That really concludes this argument. By resurrection from the dead. So this is a great testimony from Paul, from the Apostle Paul and even the scripture that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you don't believe this, you will perish. This wonderful truth that God himself revealed, if man will not believe this, then the man will perish. 
Now, let me come to the conclusion now, our application. Okay? Of course, there is the third voice. And kaninong boses yon? Us. Your voice must be heard. Now, you might ask, Pastor Robin, important ba ba yung boses ko marinig pa in this argument? Is my voice is really important to the matter? Matthew chapter 16, last verse. Matthew chapter 16 from verses 13. Sabi dito, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Anong sinasabi ng mga tao about the Son of Man? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say that you are Elijah, and still others say that you are Jeremiah or the other is of the prophets. But here is the Lord Jesus Christ directing his question to the people that is in front of him, just like what we are, we are right now. It says here, but what about you? Jesus asks, who do you say I am? This is what I believe, brothers and sisters, that your voice is very important as well. Who do you say is the Son of God? Who is Jesus Christ to you? And that questions that you alone could answer. You might answer it theologically by definition, but if it is manif if it is not manifest in your life, and that means nothing to you. Look at the response of Peter under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It says in verse 16, Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the Savior, the Son of the living God. In himself, he declared through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that indeed you are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God that you came here in flesh. So he understood, he understand this, that you came here for our sins. You came here to die. So that is so December 25 well, will be Sunday. And that will be our message. Jesus Christ did not come here in this world to give us a holiday. He came in this world to die. And that is something that much important for us to really understand. Because if I say December 25, oh, you think it's holiday. And you never thought that the Lord Jesus Christ came here for that very purpose that he should die and not to give us those holiday. And that will be the message in December 25. That will be from Pastor Nick. So please be here if you will be available here. Or make yourself available. Okay? So here is the answer, the declarations of Peter, of Simon Peter, that indeed the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he believed that so. And as my, I, I myself, brothers and sisters, believe that as well. Can we have our praise and worship team, please, to come in front, and as we are going to have our time now to close us in the message. Can we ask everyone to please stand and we're going to pray? Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We honor you and give you praise. Thank you so much that once again you have revealed who you are into our midst this morning that indeed Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Thank you for the word. Thank you for this 
belly hour that you have given to all of us, Lord, that really we, we, we love to hear your voice, that whenever we have this moment and every Sunday, we would be eager to, to be here, oh God. Lord, we just want to thank you because we know and we believe that there is more that you have in store for all of us. And thank you so much, Panginoon, for everyone who are here, for our visitors, even Lord God, sa lahat-lahat na narito, thank you so much, Lord God. At patuloy ka namin pinapupulihan at patuloy ka namin uh, dinadakila. Ito po ang aming samot na langin sa pangalan ay Panginoong Yesus. Amen and Amen. So let us raise our hand for the benediction. May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you true and true. And may your Holy Spirit, your soul and body, be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. So God bless everyone.